Hello, and welcome to Book Reviews Kill, a podcast about fantasy, science fiction, and horror novels. I'm Evan. And I'm Chad. And today, you're joining us for a recap and discussion of A Court of Mist and Fury, book two in the A Court of Thorns and Roses series by Sarah J. Maas. All right, Chad, what'd you think about Akamath? Oh, man, Akamath. Uh, it uh, it Akamath me up. I loved it. It went up and down and left and right and uh, was colorful and just as spice- spicier than the first one, which... Oh, yeah was just fantastic i mean i loved it i loved every page of it i certainly have some things to say about like the plot and some of the interweavings but man sarah j moss really excels at so many things her characters and their interchange and playing with each other is just fantastic and i really enjoyed it. i liked it more than the first one i think and now you're privy to the chapter 55 memes, which is <laughs> yes. so exciting. I didn't know for the longest time, you know, I didn't know what everyone was talking about. And then you get there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, uh, this uh, this book jumps around quite a bit. I mean, Mas steps up the world building. We're searching for things. We're traveling around Prithian, seeing new locations. Like the last book felt like it was mainly in you know three locations. And though we heard a lot about the other spots, we, we didn't really get to see them. And in this book, we do. Oh, yeah. And also, like, I mean, this book is definitely a little bit jarring in how quickly it pivots away from the first one with uh, Resand and Tamlin specifically. Like right mm-hmm. out of the gate, we've got Feyre dealing with depression and PTSD from the events of the last books. You know, Tamlin is just... A, we get a huge perspective or perception totally shift different on change Tamlin. on him. Absolutely. But I think that Moss did a really terrific job, not only portraying the feelings that would come out of the events of the last book, but like the serious effect that they would have on your like day-to-day function. It's a huge totally. part of this book. And she, you know, she took it seriously. She took trauma seriously. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the story was able to blossom in an organic way because of it. Right. And with a lot of like relationships like i don't know you can kind of develop a bond through like trials and like circumstance you know like you're like forced together and thus you but when the situation cools down and you're just hanging out at home like trying to live and like function with each other and just like you're not going through like hell or a war together or something yeah. it's like man you know it's uh i guess it's kind of a statement into like you know don't be hasty you know? <laughs> <laughs> make sure you know fully about someone you know and well, Tamlin's heart was kind of in the right. He was like an idiot, but we're gonna you know, talk about it for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. After after the recap, I think that'll we're gonna we're gonna get right into that. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. Let's, let's do that. I'm, I'm excited thing. to talk about it. Yeah, I mean, I'll definitely say you know, um, like you said, Masa's strengths really lie in her characters and the relationships between them. I think the world building is really great here. I mean, I. Like I love learning about the history of I call them the Bat Boys. Everybody calls them the Bat Boys, but you know, like Cassian, Cassian and Asriel. Uh, and Asriel, yeah. I call him Azzy. Azzy, nice. <laughs> He's but, like yeah. I think one of the hottest ones. He's kind of this yeah, Asriel book solution. Is, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Asriel is whew. Um, but yeah, <laughs> digging into the history there, digging into Highburn and the barrier between the human and Fey realms and everything. I think Moss does a really good job at that. I think her specific plot points get a little messy sometimes you know like especially towards the end of this book when she's trying to wrap everything together and it's just i felt like a thousand things were happening oh Um, my gosh even like reading it the first time and then like looking at our recap here and i was kind of just like oh yeah that oh and then that oh oh yeah and then that happened oh yeah and then that when you put it in order of events without all the juice because like this is a character relationship driven story not a plot driven story and so when you write a recap it's all like plot stuff because you can't get into the like the subtleties of character development very much so it's like this happened then this happened this sounds a little like a list you know it's just like a I don't know, they're like they're on a bunch of errands and then a lot of things just happen all of a sudden for no reason. You're like, oh, uh, and this is that way now, just because, okay. Yeah, it's kind of like a grocery list. Like they got to yeah. go get all this stuff, um, but it's fine. I mean, you know, we'll talk yeah, about whatever. that too, obviously. But yeah, let's get right into the recap. Like Chad said, um, the recap definitely sounds kind of like this happens and then this happens <laughs> and then this happens. But the discussion is where we get down into the feelings and the uh, the minutiae there. So everybody, yes. thank you so much for listening to that intro. This, and here's the recap. We'll go ahead and timestamp that for you if you want to skip it. All right, let's do it. Three months after the events of A Court of Thorns and Roses, Feyre is back in the spring court with Tamlin. Though she and Tamlin are now engaged to be married, things are not going as well as we might hope. Feyre is suffering from terrible nightmares that keep her awake and often make her physically ill. 
Tamlin shows a dominating protective streak, choosing to not notice her declining physical and mental health while she is confined. Feyre's unhappiness worsens, as even her requests to visit the nearby village are refused, all under the guise of keeping her safe. Tamlin tells Feyre she will never be High Lady, leaving Feyre to wonder what her role will be once they are married. Ianth, one of the twelve High Priestesses of Prithian, plans the wedding and practically worships Feyre and Tamlin. She has also made an alliance with Tamlin on behalf of the Twelve. On the big day, Feyre realizes that she is too emotionally sick to make this life decision, but doesn't know how to get out of it. She is screaming inside her mind for someone to save her, and Resand appears, whisking her way to the Night Court. Feyre finds the Night Court much less terrifying than she expected, though her opinion of Resand hasn't improved much. He insists that she learn to read and also to shield her mind. Her thoughts often scream at him through their mental link. She meets Rhysand's cousin Morrigan, who is anxious to become her friend. Rhysand, who does not have a high opinion of Yanth, informs Feyre of things previously kept from her. He says that war is coming, and the wall that separates the Fey world from the mortal world will likely come down if that happens. Feyre worries for her family. The king of Highburn has been planning to reclaim the mortal lands for a century, and Prithian is the only thing standing in his way. Rhysand wants Feyre to find out if Tamlin will fight with the Night Court if it comes down to it. He also believes that Feyre might have special abilities or powers from the High Fae that created her, that she needs to learn and use. Later, Morrigan delivers the news that a temple in Sisir was attacked, and all the priestesses were slain. Azrael and Cassian believe it to be rogue Illyrian clans, and Rhysand leaves to meet with them. Feyre returns to the Spring Court, and Tamlin and Lucian immediately interrogate her about the Night Court. Feyre is starting to show signs of her growing powers. She burns the table and enters Lucian's mind accidentally. This makes her a Demete. She returns to the Night Court for another week, and Rhysand notices that she has lost weight and is an unemotional shell, though her reading and mind shielding have improved. Back at the Spring Court, Feyre attempts to accompany Tamlin and Lucian on an outing to investigate some unknown threat. But Tamlin uses his air shield to lock her in the house. She crumbles under the claustrophobia. Rhysand and Morrigan come to her rescue. She stays in the Night Court for a while, and Rhysand takes her to Valeris, the City of Starlight. Valeris is untouched by Amarantha because she did not know that it existed. Rhysand takes Feyre to the House of Wind, high on a mountaintop overlooking Valeris, to meet his inner circle of friends and advisors. In addition to Morrigan, this circle consists of Cassian and Azrael, winged Illyrians, and Amran, a strange creature that once had a different body, just like Feyre, though Feyre was made entirely new when she was just reborn by the High Lords. These four people all come from unexpected and tragic backgrounds. Rhysand takes Feyre to talk with the bone carver in prison. Amran gives Feyre an amulet to borrow that will not allow her to be trapped in the prison. The carver confirms that Jurian is to be reborn using the eye that Amarantha kept around her neck. The King of Highburn is collecting the magical cauldron, its missing feet, and the Book of Breathings, which tells how to wholly control the cauldron. With this cauldron, they could shatter the wall that separates the Fey from the mortal lands. Long ago, the book was ripped in two. The mortal queens have one half, and the High Lord of Summer has the other. With it, they can nullify the powers of the cauldron. They start their search by going to Feyre's old home in the mortal lands and riding to the mortal queens. Feyre's sisters are terrified at first, but Elaine warms to them. Nesta's attitude is less welcoming, though they agree to help. While in the mortal land, the Ator, who was once in the employ of Amarantha, attempts to kidnap Feyre and they learn from him that the King of Highburn is on the move and will try to invade. He also wishes to have Feyre. They return home, but Azrael continues to use his spy network to try to reach the mortal queens. Feyre decides it's time to start training both her fighting skills as well as her new magic. She slowly learns to use all her new skills and comes to terms with what happened to her and what she did under the mountain. Later, they are invited to the Summer Court, so Feyre, Rhysand, and Amran go to meet the new High Lord, Tarkin, and Princess Chrysida. Feyre is to try to find the half of the Book of Breathings, using her connections to Tarkin. She finds that she really does like the king, but in the end, she and Amran steal it away from its hiding place in an old chapel on an island. When they return home, it is discovered that the book's language is that of Amran, 
the only known person of her kind. They believe the complete book might also help her to get home using magic. Time passes as Feyre trains. Aaron tries to decode the book, and they all wait to hear from the mortal queens. They finally hear back, and the entire inner circle travels back to Feyre's family's home to meet with them. At first, the queens refuse to allow them to see the book. Only after Morgan shares with them the facts of what will happen if Highburn breaks the wall and invades do they agree to think about handing the book over. Their condition is that they need to see proof that Resand is not the monster he is rumored to be. Feyre learns about Miriam, a half-human, half-fey, who was Jurian's lover, but she fell in love with another fey named Dracon. After the war and Jurian's defeat by Amarantha, Miriam and Dracon, who were believed to be dead, snuck away and started a whole new life where humans and fey could live together peacefully. As proof of his humanity, Rhysand decides to show the queens his hidden city, Valeris. He will show them, but not allow them in. To do this, they will use an orb containing truth magic they will steal from the Court of Nightmares. When they arrive at the court, they put on a great show meant to distract. Rhysand displays his brutality as a High Lord, and Azrael steals the orb. Before leaving the Court of Nightmares, Morrigan's father insults Feyre, and Rhysand uses magic to break many of his bones. Later, while flying, Rhysand is attacked by an unknown threat with ash arrows from the ground as he flies. He avoids them, but it seems he is being tracked when he uses his powerful magic. The group travels to the Illyrian war camp that Rhysand, Cassian, and Asriel once trained in. Rhysand avoids using magic, but Feyre trains her magic with him away from the camp. Here, Feyre learns that Tamlin's family killed Rhysand's mother and sister. In turn, Rhysand's father killed Tamlin's whole family. Thera's worldview is changing. While training one day, Lucian and some others from the Spring Court find Feyre and try to convince her to come home with them, back to Tamlin. Feyre refuses, and Rhysand sends them on their way. Feyre and Rhysand decide to travel away for the night. The next day, as Rhysand flies through the air carrying Feyre, they are again attacked and he takes seven poisoned ash arrows in his wings and several in his legs. They are separated, and Rhysand is captured. Feyre saves him, and they learn that the captors were from Highburn, but Rhysand is poisoned, and Feyre must find a cure. She captures the cereal, who is all-knowing, and asks him how to help Rhysand. She must let him drink her blood, which will have healing powers from the High Lord of the Dawn. He also let it slip that Rhysand is her mate, and Rhysand has known for a while. This knowledge infuriates her because he has been lying to her. Feyre takes several days away from everyone to come to terms with this turn of events. She rediscovers her painting, and when Rhysand comes to her, they reconcile and complete the mating bond. He tells her his whole story, including knowing they were mates before she ever returned to the Spring Court after their time under the mountain. He had been dreaming of her years before then. They finally hear back from the mortal queens and meet again at Feyre's old home in the mortal lands. After seeing the truth of Valaris, the queens still refuse to give them the other half of the book. They leave, but one queen has snuck the book away and left it for them to find. Before returning home, Cassian vows to help protect Feyre's sisters, even if their mortal leaders abandoned them. Back home, Amarin decodes the book. Suddenly, a great Highburn army sweeps in to destroy Valaris. The mortal queens have betrayed them. The inner circle, including Feyre and her now very strong powers, successfully hold the forces off just as Rhysand returns and puts the protective wards back into place. They decide to quickly sneak into Highburn and nullify the cauldron. Feyre must touch it and speak a spell, but things go wrong in Highburn. Feyre does not speak the spell, and the entire group is captured by none other than Juria, who has been remade. The king uses magic to bind them from using their own magic while holding Azrael's life in the balance with an ash bolt. It turns out that Tamlin has sold them out. He and Lucian are there as well as the mortal queens. Feyre's sisters have been captured and are used as proof to the mortal queens that the cauldron will work to make them immortal without harming them. Both sisters are turned into Fey. Neither Tamlin nor Lucian knew that the sisters would be taken. It was Iantha that had given their location away. Her goal is to get rid of the High Lords and allow the High Priestesses to rule. Tamlin believes that he is saving Feyre from Rhysand. Lucian announces that Feyre's sister Elaine is his mate. Feyre, without anyone knowing, has been wielding her own magic, finding the cracks in the magic that binds them. 
When she is sure that her friends can escape, she begins playing the part of a woman slowly getting her memory back. She makes Tamlin think she wishes to go home with him to the spring court. She begs the king to end her bargain with Resand, and he does, or at least he thinks he does. The bargain that she must visit him once a month is gone, but their mental tie and mating bond remain. Her friends escape back home with the Book of Breathings and take Feyre's sisters with them. Resand prepares for war. Feyre goes to the spring court with Tamlin, but little do they know that Feyre was, only the night before, made High Lady of the Night Court. All right, let's get to the juicy stuff first. First of all, what did you think about Resand and Feyre with oh. the paints? Oh, man, the chapter 55 scene. Oh, yeah. Uh, it was spicy. It was wonderful. And man, it was it was some it was some heat happening in that cabin, though. Well, what did you think of it before I complain about it? <laughs> You're going to complain about it? OK, well, that's when like the bond thing happens, right? Oh, you like want to talk mate. about the mating? Okay, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll like... get to that. We'll get to that. Okay, we'll get to okay, that. okay. <laughs> That's a thing. Uh, I really like the buildup between Reese and Feyre. Yes. Like we're we're at the end of this book, you know. Oh I mean, yeah. Like they could have hooked up at so many different points, and they didn't. And it was just I loved how it all built. It was a total enemies to lovers thing, you know. It was like they kind of got on each other's nerves, or at least you know Reese and got on Feyre's nerves. Reese and knew the whole time that that she was his mate. Right. right? But he didn't. He didn't come off super strong and you know he understood that she's like a person and that she has strengths and weaknesses and you know things that she needs to improve on things that she needs to get through mentally and emotionally so he didn't press the issue you know he he let her be it all built up and it all became this really romantic earned love affair and it's so so fantastic not to mention they're in this secluded cabin in the mountains oh. you know she's been there just furiously painting for <laughs> I don't know how long. Painting her fingers to the bone. <laughs> There's already such a swirl of emotions before this happens. And then it's just this release during that scene. It's so fantastic. Well, really the scene good. was excellent, but you nailed it. I was surprised we jumped right to there because you nailed it when you said that the best part about their whole story and that whole really book in my mind, like one of the favorite things was their buildup. It was done just like very slowly, very step by step. And it was like, realistic it allowed me to believe what was happening and the like relationship was turning from where it started which was not great to this love situation that it ended with and it wasn't at any point like forced or rushed and it was like really cute too like they're like texting you know he's like sending her the little notes you know that disappear from her bed at night and stuff i was like ah oh, they're texting i don't know for me it was the it was the seclusion it was like how far away they were from everything it's so thoughtful and cute and slow and perfect. It's a really, yeah. really well done scene. Reese and Feyre, as these books keep going, just keep making more and more sense. That's awesome. I'm really glad to hear that because while I really liked how the story went from Tamlin to Reese situation, it kind of needed to happen, right? Like Tamlin like showed her how to love, kind of, or she through her experiences. <laughs> well, no, 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 didn't show her through her experiences <laughs> with Tamlin. She learned this other part of herself totally. about like yeah, how that's to a love. Much, 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 yeah, yeah. Much, no, much Tamlin didn't teach you. Putting... Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, like, uh, I think we, you know we need to talk about Tamlin. We absolutely do um, because like the love interests here were totally swapped. Yeah. Oh in man. This book. It was a little like I don't know. Whereas the Reese and Feyre's situation was so warmed up and so right and just spot on. It was like all of a sudden Tamlin went from being like this awesome like lover to this super overprotective, super a-hole who thinks about no one but himself. Like clearly the claustrophobic protective walls you're building around your bride to be is like hurting her both physically and mentally. Like, she's a, a creature who needs to be free, you know? She needs to flit right. among the woods. And not be trapped inside, and he like doesn't even kind of get that. He wants, he doesn't want their dynamic to change, right? Like, I mean, she's now like this really powerful fae, and he's he's like, no, you were my prisoner. You were just supposed to be like this, basically like doting housewife. That's basically right. what he wanted of her. He wanted a queen of the night court, not a, right. you know what I mean? Like, he wanted a like a, a woman to just kind of be by his side while he ran the show. You know, right, someone to make him look good. It. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, like what? I mean, what do you think? Do you think that his character was assassinated? 
And I mean, before we go on, like, let me just, uh, I'll just, if you're listening and, um, not sure what character assassination means, it's when the author, like, deliberately portrays, like, previously non existent negative traits. Like, uh, it's usually not, it doesn't feel very organic sometimes. Like, a good example of this is, like, when, uh, like, Jamie Lannister's, uh, innocence or otherwise quote from season eight of Game of Thrones. You know, right. where it's just like their whole morality is like kind of shifted just to like make room for the plot that the author wants to happen. Um, you're just like, what? That's not what that character would do. Yeah. I mean, I see, it's funny because like the first time that I read this, I thought that that's what was going on. But I've since kind of changed my mind about Tamlin. Like, what Me do you too. think? OK, so my first thought was exactly what you said your initial reaction was. I was like, man, the total character assassination. He goes from this like loving, doting guy to being just like air wall magic locked inside the house and it's like okay what we didn't then i just like sat and thought about it a little bit more we never actually got to know tamlin really we never really got to see them in like everyday life when the world isn't on fire you know right, like they were always yeah. working through a problem together which is a different sort of relationship and connectivity than just like watching netflix together in the Being evening together yeah. yeah yeah and so we didn't really get to know tamlin very well and it kind of i mean we got some hints at his character like the way that everyone was kind of very careful around him like they were almost his court was kind of afraid of him and so it's like we i probably should have known a little bit more and not been so like he got character assassinated because he really didn't we just got to know him more yeah, I mean, it's it's a really terrific example of how, like, abusive relationships can start and nobody, yeah. you, you don't really know that it's happening. You know, like, the red flags are there, but you almost need that other perspective to be able to see them. So once, uh, once Feyre starts spending time with Resand, like, Resand is encouraging her to learn how to read. I was really upset about the whole, like, you can't train thing. That's when I was like, okay, why? Because he's like, well, if they learned that you have powers, like, people would kill for that power. Like, what? Like, you have that power? Like, and if they do learn that they have, that she has the power, wouldn't it be better if she knows how to, like, kind of defend herself? Lucian even, like, begs Tamlin, like, let her train, man. Like, we have a million rooms in this house. Just put her in one without windows. <laughs> yeah but he's just he's not interested in it no like i mean i think that and i mean tamlin loves Feyre, but it's just not enough sometimes you know i mean you have to have an equal amount of respect for each other and i don't think that he really respects Feyre as a person he he sees her as like this this object like this right this thing that can just like be a part of his legacy as the high lord of the spring court it's like this necessity that he feels like right. he has you know it's, and it sucks like i mean if you combine that like obviously fair is aware of this as she's growing more aware of it as she spends more time with recent but like combine that with like his kind of indifference to her ptsd and and trauma like her inability to sleep at night and yeah. you know i mean he's really just he's kind of treating her like like her experience is an inconvenience to him you know and it's terrible like, it's terrible and so it's not like, a character I've... assassination i mean no. it's really like these signs have been laid out this whole time but you know pharaoh was so wrapped up in everything that she she didn't see it it's not it's you know it's definitely not her fault or anything but it's just she needed to spend some time away from that situation to see how like unhealthy it was and i think that a lot of people reading these books can totally relate to something like that yeah. like getting into a relationship and everything seems amazing and then a little time goes by and you're like "Ooh, wait a minute that's probably not great you it's know hard or to even see that when that moment happens you know because it's oh, a very yeah. subtle like it's super subtle road oh and i don't even think tamlin thinks that he is being selfish because i think he's lying oh, he's not, not he does he's lying to himself and that he thinks he's truly doing it to try to protect her because he has had like everything that he loves besides Lucian like taken from him and destroyed and just anything he loves it seems to not work out very well for him so he's like this one I'm going to protect and keep her safe and pure from everything else and it's like yeah but in doing yeah, so you're never gonna not work. letting the plant have any sun man it's never right. gonna grow exactly and I mean there's a quote here that I really like that shows how clear this is all becoming to Feyre uh, it says I realized how badly I'd been treated before if my standards had become so low, if the freedom I'd been granted felt like a privilege and not an inherent right. 
that's that's the main that's it right yeah. there like she was it's happy for any sense. amount of freedom she was getting and that's the problem right like she like she had someone in charge of how much freedom she had right. and that's and why when the, she finally uh, gets to resend and resend is just kind of like yeah whatever you want to do like we got to work on this we got to work on this you know it's right. giving her that space to make her own decisions and come to her own conclusions and stuff which tamlin wasn't w- ready to do uh, i think all of that was done masterfully really really well that's easily the best arc in this whole book totally you know? and just like the i mean you know it's like the the fruit is in the uh is in the tr- what the tree bears right Cause it's like look at the friends that tamlin has lucian but like is lucian his friend like kind of he kind of rules by fear you know I don't like think, like lucian and tamlin's relationship is really interesting like yeah. i don't think it's a fear thing i think that um, it's like a duty movie honor bound did, did we go through lucian's backstory in this like do we find out where lucian's from in this book um we do in the first book oh yeah he's from a the autumn, bit, like, autumn yeah court. he's from the autumn court and like his yeah. brother is all um yeah we're totally super okay, yeah. terrible so, try to kill him and stuff so yeah like i mean there's and another thing that that Moss does really well in this book is go through kind of a little bit more of the history of these characters right so i mean like Tamlin and Reese's history is very messed up. Lucian fits into all of this in a very jagged way. It's 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 messy, you know. Right. Um, and because of how messy it is, now we've got these other events that are happening, and everyone's still kind of dealing with the past ones while they're trying to deal with these ones. You right. Know? So it's just ah, it's just this big storm of emotions, and everybody's so hot. Like everybody's, <laughs> everybody's like, so hot. Like everyone's so upset and traumatized and super hot. You know. Yeah. So, <laughs> so well, it maybe... creates a pretty cool atmosphere. <laughs> it, it does. <laughs> totally does. The um, the um, uh, you're right. He's not being. He's not ruling by fear necessarily. It's like a little bit different than that. But if you look over on the other side at Resan and his relationships, it's like straight love. He's got his inner circle of best friends, and you can kind of tell that like the quality of someone by how much their friends care about them and are willing to like put their own um, interests aside for the sake of their friend. You're like, oh, okay, this guy must be a pretty good person because you don't get loyalty like that for from being an asshole. Well, not that flavor of loyalty. Yeah. Right? Like there's different kinds. Um, and like they've been, I mean, at least uh, Cassie and Asriel and Resand um, are all very familiar with what each other has like gone through. They've all been friends since childhood. They're all in very high ranking positions for Illyrians, right. right? They're dealing with all kinds of like inner Illyrian politics and things like that, that Feyre's not really like super privy to. Like she obviously wants to know more about it, but this is a, this is a thing that's gone back a long time you know right um there's a lot of bad blood um in like within the illyrians and we get a little bit more light shed on that soon um but yeah like the night court scenes are some of the best in these books obviously valeris is just <laughs> i fucking love i fucking oh, love valeris so cool. yeah um if what did you think thing... about oh go ahead I will say that I thought that Rhysand showed Valeris a little too quick to all uh, <laughs> Farah. It's a like, mate. He's just like, yeah, okay. I mean, uh, yeah, you're right. He was the mate. Do you want to talk about the, the mate things? Yeah, well, let's talk about that in a second. I don't know. I still just feel like he was like, ah, you know, I had kept this super secret city from like Amarantha for years and years and years. It was like the hardest thing I've ever done. Like two weeks after knowing or whatever, he's like, Hey, check out my super secret city. Like what? But I mean, he, but she's his mate. I obviously. know. I know. When I look at it through the lens of like, full, but at the time when I was reading it, I was like, totally, Oh, that seemed yeah. a little fast. <laughs> totally. I got to ask you though. What do you think about the mates? The mate, okay. the mate system. <laughs> Uh, all right how do i say this grace it was dumb i I don't really like it and it came out of nowhere there was one thing that like weren't mates discussed in the first book i I never heard of it it was brought up i think but it's not like yeah but it's not yeah it's oh i mean it can a mate could be like you know like they're my mate for life like it's not totally. it doesn't necessarily need, mean to be this like the one ring like type of bond I keep forgetting power that like this is this is like your first ever like foray into romance at all so it's like like the <laughs> the mated bond thing is like 
pretty tropey. Like it's oh, like a really? lot of, yeah, okay. yeah, like like I mean, uh, you know, went right like, over we my head a few have times. to be together. Like it's like right, we're fated like cosmically to be together. Which like, kind of takes away some of the magic in my mind because it's like I like people who choose to be with each other through thick and thin. They don't have to be, and I don't even know what that means. And then Fairy gets super annoyed at Reese, like furious, like has to go spend her three days in the woods, which you know ends very well. Um, but you know, she's so upset about it. It's like, did you even know about this thing? And then finally, when she's like, okay, fine, I'll forgive you. Now, how do I do this? And she, he's like, well, you have to feed me dinner. It's like, you didn't even know about it. Like, <laughs> so upset. Yeah, the mate thing. It's, I mean, apart from how often they use the word, which is yeah. like every few sentences in this book, you know, like, like my mate, <laughs> yeah. my mate. Um, yeah, it's it is. It's a weird thing, yeah. I mean, I feel the same way as you do. Of it, kind of takes away a little bit, in my opinion, yeah. from from like how sincere all of this free will? is. Like, I don't think it's free will because you could choose, I guess, to not. I be don't with know some. what the mate is. What does that mean? Like, if you get married to someone else, you just like explode. <laughs> like, I don't understand. It's just like this. It, I look at it as like a a stronger connection to somebody than you would ever feel with someone else okay so it's okay. like it's like it's not necessarily that you have to be together it's just that you you wouldn't feel these same feelings for another right. person the connectivity is higher ceiling yeah. okay but it's just it just feels i don't i don't know i don't know i don't think it's i don't think it's like horrible but i just yeah. i feel like you could kind of just lift it right out and it doesn't yeah. really need to be there um, yeah they were doing just fine before the mate thing came along yeah, it's like, I mean, it's almost like while writing this or, you know, thinking about it, you're just kind of like, all right, how can I make it so, like, even more extra special? I know, right. I'll just, like, like cosmically link them so that they, like, <laughs> yeah. um, but I mean, to be fair, I mean, like, if mates really did exist, yeah, you were able to have sex with your mate, like, that'd probably be pretty, pretty good. Yeah, your wars like, would probably bring down a mountain. <laughs> that'd probably be pretty solid, <laughs> you know, um, and I think that that's kind of, like, it's just like some extra icing on the love cake, you know. Yeah, what I mean? oh, like that's it's, like well said. I like yeah, that a lot. Yeah, like it's just kind of like it's like not only have they because their relationship is earned, right? Right, right. That's what I mean about you can kind of lift it right out, but putting it back in makes it a little juicier, you know? Right, because now like they're forced to deal with each other. We're mates now. We got to work. It's like no, they fell in love way before that, you know. Yeah, and I mean, it's almost like. Like, I feel like you can look at the mate thing from a lot of different angles, right? One angle is kind of like what we talked about, where it's like, uh, it kind of, you could make the argument that it makes it not as sincere, right? You know, because like they almost like have to be together. The cosmic magic angle, like, eh. Yeah, but at the same time, like, you can also look at it from the lens of they're just like destined for each other, right? The fate, like, no matter the what fate events yeah. happen, they're still, which is pretty cool. Like, yeah, it's a, it's a weird thing. I mean, I think it's mostly good and it serves the story pretty well, but it's also just kind of like by like the middle of the next book, you're just like, could you please stop using this word? Like, it's just, <laughs> right. Oh and my God. I, I so already know much. this is going to happen and I'm already a little annoyed by it. Okay. You know how I was complaining a couple of weeks ago, how I don't like it where one character is special in a book and it's like different than every other person in like all of the books universe. And then like three chapters later, everybody is special yeah right, yeah i kind of felt that was and i feel like it's definitely going i can like see it written on the wall it is coming in hard that that's what's going to happen to the mates i like this mate thing being this like once in a lifetime like not everyone even knows their mate or finds out and it's like i feel like it's going to be like the dominoes are falling on mate land i got a mate i got a mate you're my mate you're my mate you're my mate like everyone's gonna have a mate three books from now for sure yeah um it's a, it is a weird way of just kind of like pairing people up and it doesn't really do anything extra, you know what I yeah. mean? Like I don't know. It's a weird. It's a weird thing. And I think, like um, the, yeah, it, it really. These books are really. Um, they're really like heteronormative. That's a thing for sure. Um, they're really like long-term committed monogamous relationship, like oriented, which I don't. I don't really have like a, a huge problem with or anything. But it's just very like. It's very like okay now you two are with these you two are here and you two are here and you two are here and everything fits and it's really pretty and, and nice perfect. and everybody yeah and it's just like I don't know for me it's just kind of like eh, all right well mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. uh, it's not great I do think that some of the romances in these books are really well done but others don't I don't I'm not feeling it really I'm really curious to see how the Lucian Elaine 
situation and that's kind of what i was saying was like everyone gets a maid it's like she pops out of the cauldron all face style because you know we just needed a lever f- to fay out her sisters as well uh so that happens and then he's like immediately just like you're my mate and it's like how did yeah, he know how... that? yeah i think you just feel it you know and that's another thing that i wanted to talk about because like that's a um one thing that i really hate in fantasy books it's one of it's one of my biggest pet peeves in fantasy is when the magic system just you just you just think it really hard and that magics you know what i mean like i just i've i've always hated it like in harry potter it sounds like it's it feels like the louder you say a spell the better it is you know what i mean right right like it's all about like your mind yeah like there's so many parts in these books where feyre just like just magics you know what right. i mean and there's no real like i don't understand like why it's working better this time than it did right the last just time Poor emotion on the magical it's not like, even really seed. emotion it's just like i just like did it really hard you know what i mean and it's just <laughs> i don't know that uh, it's always bugged me there's no real like magic system in these books no you know? uh it's just it's just magics like how does the cauldron work it's just powerful like right. that's what it is like it's not it's not like you know, it was built with this certain material or it was like all the sadness of all the fairies was poured into it or something. Right, like right, something, right. It becomes powerful by being put back together and then right. it, boom, it's powerful and it'll turn humans into fairies or, but only right. these it, two it humans. It feet for some reason. Like, is it half a bowl or like? Yeah, that is, um, I, that's like one of the parts of these books that I just really can't get behind is just like this weak ass magic system. Totally. And just like, cool. So now she's got water wolf. How water wolf pack attack. Like, okay, I guess she knows how to do that now and uh which was a like i gotta i gotta like caveat everything i say because sarah Moss does such a really descriptive vibrant job of explaining everything that it's all awesome like it's so awesome oh, yeah, when it's happening it's awesome. and if you think about it you're like what where did the wolf like i guess she's taking out the adder now like she's just she's got that sort of juice which is fine but like i feel like she knows where she wants something to go and she just kind of forces it you know <laughs> And she's just like, bludgeons really, the story to yeah, the Yeah, like she just she doesn't needs. really like care the minutiae of like how this actually happens. It's just like, all right, so Feyre needs to kill this thing, so this happens. Right. You know, and it's we're like, not gonna not go into like a ton of, of detail. Book. Uh yeah. she's just walking along the coast one day and sees this like thing out there in the tides, like there's a hut out there, maybe it's in there, and they're like, That's definitely it. It's like, okay. Yeah. Like the the King of Highburn at the end. Let's talk about the ending just a little bit. Okay, like, okay, uh, let's the, do it. Like the King of Highburn, I feel like he was just kind of like, "All right, get out of here." You know, really? that was yeah. yeah, that was weird. He was like, that was really... I'm the biggest baddie. I'm going to kill everyone and my machinations and spider web. Okay, I'm like game's over. Everybody out of here. Like what? Like why didn't he just literally kill all of them if he was right. that powerful? Like, like they're obviously the, problem, the only bro. people in this entire realm that are actually actively trying to stop what he's doing and he's just right. like ah we'll save this for another day you know <laughs> yeah. like it's just like wait it was why? Very, like, like mustache twirly yeah um I mean what did you think about Tamlin kind of coming in and betraying everybody though? Man again my initial reaction was like man a little character assassination but man I just oh, to keep sense. telling myself that like he didn't we i didn't know tamlin by the time that the first book ended i saw him in a very specific set of circumstances and he was fine then but like you know uh he's also got a lot more to deal with and that was super not cool (laughs) he's so convinced of his own lines that he's telling himself that he's like this is what's best for her like resan's actually been using the bond to manipulate her and like turn her into like his slave or something and then uh Man, he's just so delusional. It made me mad at the end of this book that he, I mean, because I knew obviously that Feyre is the high, the high lady of the of the Night Court and everything. Mm-hmm. I knew that was happening, and I knew that Tamlin didn't know. But I also didn't like the satisfaction that Tamlin must have felt at having Feyre back. Like yeah. I didn't even want him to have that. It was just greasy. He felt like he won that situation. Totally. And it's just like he just continues to feel like he's really right about everything. And that yeah, he does and he was have like, her I saved interest. her again. I saved her. And you're like, dude, ugh, yeah, no, you didn't, didn't played right now, dude. Yeah, yeah. That was uh the whole last part of the book is really it's really cool and it's really exciting. And sets up the next story book. It I'm sets sure, up very the next well. book really well, but it's just like Feyre just like passing out next to the cauldron, and like you said, like they're all trapped, and then all of a sudden she just tries really hard, and now they yeah, can't and like, then like okay, and, like, and Amarin like tells her 
do not put these two pieces what? of the book together. <laughs> like, destroy the just, world. Yeah, she's just like, all right, I'm just going to put these two pieces of the book together. Why did it's she like, wait, put I don't the pieces know. together? I feel like maybe what it was is that the cauldron is just like, it's it's this, the cauldron is this really, really powerful magical object. And I think okay. that the power of it just kind of like overwhelmed her. That's how I was looking at it. Okay. It's just, I mean, it can bring down like this barrier. It's so powerful. Um, Pharaoh is so close to it. And um, Pharaoh is still training, obviously. Right. And I think Moss did a really good job at kind of like not making Pharaoh like an uber superhero like two weeks after she got her powers or whatever. Right. Um, she handled all of that like really, really well. And I think maybe that was like a way of showing that. I'm not really sure. And like Jurian, I don't, the whole like Jurian thing was weird because like i felt like we did we heard a little bit about him but i, he I feel was like, like we a could character have of lore yeah it's like he's just like bah, like i'm here yeah. and like wait where's miriam yeah <laughs> yeah the, the uh the ending of this book is not my favorite nesta and elaine being turned into fey as like a punishment is right. weird but i get it i get why they're all so upset about it but i also am kind of like, like a major violation obviously yeah that's and i think that's the point is like um they did not consent to that like right. whatever however cool of a situation that turns out to be for them they didn't ask for it you know right. so it obviously it makes sense that they're upset but it is also kind of take away the power of the situation when they come out of the cauldron and they're being described as like the most beautiful perfect right creatures. they're like <laughs> supermodel gods you yeah know, you're like, okay like a... <laughs> that seemed like a real terrible <laughs> torture that they just went through but i mean that's kind of like what i was talking about with like sarah j moss kind of like forcing some things where it's just like all right well we have to bring elaine and nesta into this and they can't just be humans in prithy and we got to make them into you know what i mean so what's gonna happen with pops oh, oh pops is he gonna oh, get is he gonna um, get forgotten or is he nah, gonna come well, a storm in the keep I one day? I can't answer that one. I can't Give answer it back, that one. my daughters. And they're gonna be like, but father, we are faith. No. Uh, I can't answer that one. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm, I'm excited. Some, some things I can't answer. So I'm really excited. Uh, and she did do a very good job of setting this little friction up in the last part of the book was the look that Lucian gives her. When she's like, I'm all yours, Tamlin. And then Lucian's like, nope, I know. <laughs> <laughs> this is total horseshit. And she like looks at him and like they have a very real moment. And she's like, so I'm going to have to deal with that now. Or she says something like that in her brain. It's like, yeah, you are. Because oh, like he's man. on Lucian, to you. Lucian is so great. He's so great. I like he's Lucian so a lot. Yeah, Lucian. Yeah, he needs to come over to the... the There's some more Lucian coming. Yeah, don't good, worry. Good, good. What'd you think about Cassian and Asriel? They were just awesome, just super awesome, just like the best sidekicks and buddies. They can, and their starting story was so great. Like everyone's been through these war camps, and they were tougher and stronger than everyone else. So all the other warriors kind of hated on them. So they had to like join up, and like it's just yeah. so cool. Like the golden retriever of friends, you know. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, like Cassian is really set up as your kind of golden retriever gamer boy type. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Like he's he's very funny. He's very he kind of tries to find the lighter side of a lot of these situations. Yeah, like I said, he's kind of this book's Lucian. Asriel though, fucking Asriel. He's just he's just in the corner smoldering and a big. Ooh, he smolders. Great word. Great word. He smolders. Shrouded by darkness all the time. And like, <laughs> yeah. I just like, it's such a vivid image in my head of like the hottest possible person just like in the corner surrounded oh, by like the swirling eddies of, of darkness, like all around him. And he's just kind of like chimes in with like really smooth lines now and then like yep. he saves his voice. Like um, Cassian and Asriel, I feel like, Mats could have fallen in the pitfall of having them be two characters that could have probably been combined into one. But no, they're super distinct characters mm -hmm. from each other and from Reese. They're three very separate people, and it's really great to watch them all interact with each other. And Reese is uh, in a position of authority over both of them. As the books go on, it's really interesting to see him kind of like, he kind of like pulls rank sometimes, which is really, yeah, it's weird. It's because you, you, you kind of like, I'm not trying to spoil anything, but like you get to know these three people so well. And then when Reese kind of like pulls rank now and then, it's just, it's very jarring. You know, you uh -huh. feel it the way that Cassian or Asriel would feel it. But at the same time, in those sort of situations, you know, like somebody's got to take the yeah. lead, you know, and they, it's like and you they can have three people that. bicking around. But yeah, I would imagine it is kind of weird. And it is a few times that I've seen it. What did you think about Amran? Amran was really interesting. So, first off, she's really terrible at knowing her own language. So there's that. Um, it's been a while. Yeah, well, come on. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> They're like, oh, perfect. It's written in this language. And you're the only one of that race left. She's like, ah, it might take me a couple months. Whatever. She was cool. She was mysterious. Again, I, I don't really like when someone has something special and then everyone has that special thing. It's like she meets like the only other person that is like, oh, she also wasn't born into her this body. She was changed in a different way, though. It was different enough that it didn't feel like the thunder was being stolen from Farah or like ideas were being reused or anything. But that was kind of my first knee jerk was like, cool. Now everybody like has a new body. Overall, she was a really cool character. It's different enough. Yeah, it's different enough because she like, yeah, she wasn't remade totally whole. Like She makes very she makes very specific points to make sure that it's different. Well, and Amarin's really important to like the, the dynamic of the group because you can't have just like you can't have everybody be like Illyrians from the Night Court. You right. Know what I right. Mean? Like it's like Amarin has like this other set of skills and knowledge that contribute quite a bit to the ensemble. She's so, super mysterious. Yeah, very mysterious for sure. But I, I just like the way she talks, you know? Mm-hmm. I like it. She's got she's got like this cool kind of like I'm a lot older and smarter than all yeah. of you. I was just gonna say she's the friend you go to when you like need help with something. Yeah, and you don't really know if she's actually gonna give it to you, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, or just like drink some blood. Yeah, she's kind of got like a a uh, like she's she's doling out information on like a need to know basis a lot of the time. She's like yeah. really reserved. Um, she wants to help for sure, but I think she like Amron kind of gives me this kind of like. Oh man, these people I'm hanging out with, like these fucking idiots. Like, yeah, I just you know. Um, but... but like everybody can't be like Cracker Jack, one of the boys. You know, right, it's like totally. she kind of ties yeah. the 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 group together and like yeah. the serious. Like she brings weight to their relationship, which I really like. So she was an important important part of the inner circle. I just loved his whole inner circle thing. Like I said, you could tell a lot about him, and in contrast, Tamlin by how the relationship they have with their inner inner circle. What did you think about the Court of Nightmares scene? Where he breaks that guy's bones. Yeah, weird, right? That whole scene yeah. was really like Morg uh Morg's whole connection to all of that. Yeah, and, yeah that was um Resand and maybe this is just me not knowing enough, but like Resand has this whole like other side that he has to portray to the rest of the night courts because it's like if he shows any weakness, then I guess he'll be taken out or lose respect or something. I don't know. So he just has to be like this big bad dude. And so he's like, I apologize for how I'm gonna have act whenever he like runs into anyone from that court maybe you can help actually shine some light into why does he have to be so like bad so i th- i mean the way that i look at it um it seems that like resand has a certain like reputation and that that reputation does a lot of heavy lifting for him even when in f- when pharaoh is informed of the night court you know just the name the night court right, right? it's kind of got like this whole other thing to it and and i think that reese uses that reputation to his advantage um, in a lot of different circumstances, and it's worked in the past for him really well. I don't think he particularly enjoys it. It's not him, you know, but he knows how to do it, and he's going to if it, if it works. Certainly has some negative con- consequences, like having to, you know, steal the truth orb to convince the queens that he's not, like, a total pile. Do you think that Tamlin will be redeemed in the next few books? Oh, good question. Man, I've been battling with that, because, like, half of me thinks... That he's just going to keep going down this self-deluded road of like, I am the only righteous one, thus my path is the only path, and anyone not on it or fighting against it is an enemy. Um, th- there's a chance that, no, I don't. I was, just, I was going to yeah. say that there's a chance that he gets together with one of her, her sisters and that's like his redeeming thing, um, I, which will definitely happen to Lucian, but um, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think he's going to spiral. And he's going to become an antagonist. And at some point, we might even have to take old Tamlin out. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think I don't think he's going to... Because we need more baddies. We need more baddies in this. We've, yeah, we've got the Nightmare Court guy, you know, uh, Reese's dad. And Autumn Court, or wherever Lucian's from, is not very... Uh, doesn't sound very pleasant. But Summer Court, they're pretty cool. And then, like, Jurian, like, I don't know. He just... He didn't hit me, uh, like, the Sauron of the... No. story you know so like and lucian or uh, excuse, excuse me tamlin has a lot more opportunity to destroy the lives of those that we love in this story and so i think because i think he also made like an agreement with the with jurian that he can like set up camp in his little area and like help him take down the wall or something like that seems 
not cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't really elaborate too much on all this, but I really enjoy hearing your answers. I, I want to know what happens. Like, what is what what mechanism in the wall is holding the fairies back? Like, they can obviously cross one at a time because they yeah, go over there and stuff but <laughs> I like i wish i could tell you <laughs> so is it holding them all back like you can't go to i don't know it was one of those things that i just was like chad this is not a thing to get stuck on bro move along okay so maybe i just didn't catch it or notice it enough but i was a little disappointed i didn't get to see more of the siphons they were like presented to me as this like only the best of the best that don't have high fey powers get to use the siphons and they are awesome like they really can hone and optimize your power we don't really get to see them like used really it just kind of becomes a demarcator of like who's really powerful like if you have a bunch of siphons or a siphon then you're way more powerful than everyone else around you or it's like an honor yeah. thing too it's honorific but like i don't know i just kind of wished it was presented to me as such like an awesome thing and then i felt like it was kind of MacGuffin a little. I know it kind of reminds me of like the Seangriels and Teangriels from uh, the Wheel yeah. of Time a little bit, <laughs> yeah. where it's just like these things are really important until they're not, and then right. they really are, <laughs> and then like they're not for this scene, but they they are. Well, we got to go get this one. But, like, we don't really yeah. need this, like very much. Yeah, um, the siphons are just. Um, I think it's just like more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just more shit. You know. Uh, it's 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 fine <laughs> yeah whatever it doesn't matter it doesn't matter yeah okay so reese allows Feyre into his mind at one point and there's it's pretty early on in the book and there's a woman trying to seduce him is that woman the high priest at tamlin's pa I um, place so. iantha yeah, or whatever I, I, I believe so yeah okay okay i wasn't 100 percent sure and i think so too so i think she's like not a good person either yeah obviously because Reese has like great instincts on these sort of things, and also it seems like she's trying to take out all of the high lords. Yeah, we need to. Yeah, you're you're right on there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and she was just too nice. She's like, I love like Tamlin and Feyre, and they're just the perfect couple. And I was like, No, you're too powerful <laughs> no. to be a psycho fan. <laughs> And just everything about their wedding was so like wrong. She didn't like her dress, but it was like what she needed to wear traditionally. And like everything about it was just so forced and ugh. But I will have to say, man, it would be hard to not be at least a little resentful to be like standing up there Tam in Tamlin shoes and then have your lady get to the end and you're like, we're going to get married. And then poof, <laughs> there's resand and no you're not <laughs> <laughs> gone and what was the line that resand says so he says to him tamlin offers reese anything he wants to end the bond the bond the bargain that him and Feyre have and he just says he kind of smirks at him he says i already have everything i want <laughs> implying i already have your wife to be and then he takes her i was like oh that was a tasty line <laughs> Okay, what did you think about the scene with the uh, the weaver, where Reese has Feyre steal that? Is it a ring? Right. Yeah, it's a ring. Uh huh. Yeah. What'd it you turns think out about later that? that it's like his mom's ring. Yeah, that I like that like a lot the... personally. I like that, that a was, lot like, too. One of the high points in the book, honestly, because like it's just it's just Feyre. It was a really exciting scene. Uh, There's a lot of anticipation there. Um, what did you think about it? I thought it was really cool. She's kind of pitted on her own. Truly, it's kind yeah. of like. Like, you want this? Like, you want to be on your own? You want to do on your own? And it was cool for us to see as the readers because, you know, the last book is Feyre making ridiculous, no concern about her own uh, health decision after another, rushing off into just these crazy Fey parties where she might be eaten or something, constantly being rescued. And it was nice to be like, okay, no, now you're on a mission. What can you do? And she does just fine. She kind of bumbles her way through it. Like it's not perfect, which I was stoked on. Uh, it's just a fun scene. Yeah, that's why it was like kind of difficult for me when we were talking about that in the last episode where you were just like, ah, I, like, I can't I can't believe she's acting like this. Like, here's all the cool stuff I would have done. And it's just like, yeah, but Chad, there's like five of these books. Like, I can't. And I couldn't <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't be like, yo, dude, like there's a scene in the next book that's like super. Yeah, I couldn't. Do yeah, that yeah. Though. I mean, you know, she's definitely redeeming herself. Does she still have any ash weapons? No, no, she does not. But hey, you know what? <laughs> she's high fey now. She doesn't need them. Yeah, dude, she's got yeah. water wolves. Maybe it's like uh, looked down on for them to use ash weapons uh, against Maybe. other fairies or something like that. 
You'd think um, they'd just be covered in ash. <laughs> well, I mean, they can't <laughs> touch it. Have ash everywhere. Okay, one thing, uh, two things. Okay, one, you nailed it when you were like, get ready for the vulgar gestures. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. There's so many vulgar yeah. gestures. It's like mate and vulgar gestures. <laughs> oh, vulgar still, gestures. Still lots of smirking, lots of purring. Yes, purring. lots yeah. of purring, lots of purring. Purred. Yes, yeah, uh, purring, lots of purring, sure. growling, vulgar gestures. I think that it's either, you can look at it two, two different ways. One of the ways that people seem to look at it is that Moss is just a bad writer, and she uses these words as kind of like crutches to get herself through the the, uh, the writing process. To you know, It's like, yeah, maybe, but uh, I think also what it is. Or is it on it is, brand? I mean, it's, it's a little bit on brand, and I think that it just really points to how much fun Moss is having while she's writing yeah. these. And it, I, I feel like she's just flying through a lot of this. Um, and it's like it's probably coming out like pretty naturally and uh, the editor is probably just like eh, whatever like it's it is on brand and like you know this is the world that she's building and stuff and right. it, maybe it's like a little bit of a mix of both you know yeah yeah <laughs> like, it's fine yeah because like Moss isn't like the most amazing writer I've ever read or anything but she's certainly no. not bad at it either like her no. descriptions are very very good oh they're so colorful it's like some of some of the uh there are points in the dialogue sometimes where it's just like, dude, people don't talk like this. Right. Like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> uh, but I mean, it's a fantasy also. So it's, um, you kind of have to, you know, there's a little give and take there. Mm -hmm. I feel like, you're, like people are very justified in being annoyed with the dialogue and the dialogue tags and just the kind of like general way that everybody's kind of just being. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like I totally get it. Okay. My like, other thing that I just remembered was like, that I both like hated and also really super loved was that Resan's wings are just big sex organ. Well, like you just I mean, touch him and he's like you're... stiff. Immediately. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It's uh, <laughs> like, no, I don't really, I don't really know his how whole to whole body in the that. air yeah. somehow still wildly sensitive. Very sensitive. Uh, you, Very you, don't sensitive. Want to, you don't want to touch those wings. No, but I mean, you do wings. want to touch but those wings. You do wings. want to touch yeah. them. <laughs> It was yeah. like elicited a lot of eye rolls, but also like this is like an eye roll and the awesome. Yeah, wasn't it? Way. Wasn't there something like the 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 wingspan is like tied directly to how? Oh yeah, yeah. How... Like the bigger the wings. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like their foot joke, right? You know. Right. Yeah. I like how she put that in. It's funny. <laughs> yeah. So, She's yeah. definitely. I th I think she can get away with a lot. Sarah J. Moss can get away with a lot more. I don't, I don't know what the right word is like not like bad writing or even like silliness but something by not taking her books too seriously and it's very plain like she's having you nailed it when you said she's having a great time while writing it and it's like yeah a lot of it's just kind of like whatever because look at how much fun we're having balancing out there's some really serious themes here there's you know themes of trauma and ptsd and being in an abusive relationship and you know having your perspective and perception of somebody that you had once loved be like shifted around and like what that does to you and you know your first love and all all that stuff those are very serious things to talk about but she also has like some pretty ridiculous shit going on that <laughs> yeah. and it's all i feel like it's pretty it's balanced like pretty well you know as we wrap up here um i mean i really do think that these are some pretty excellent books but yeah like i'm not going to sugarcoat that there's just some there's some problematic th stuff in here. There's some things that don't make any sense, you know, and it, it, it does kind of kind of stumble its way to being a, a good series for sure. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> it's yeah. just some silly shit in here, <laughs> yeah, but you do, have, silly shit. you do have fun with it and you do, you know, like uh, I'd say the, the good definitely outweighs the bad, of course. Absolutely. We get the delightful one bed trope. When they're staying oh, at the yeah. inn. Oh, oh man, that we was love great. the one bed trope. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? It was done so well. It was another yeah. like signpost along the road of their relationship that was done so well. It was like, yeah, they got a little steamy, but they didn't get that yeah, steamy. It was a very like part of the yeah. steamy. And it was like, man, it just that's made how, it so I much mean, better. That's cool though, because like th those are that it's almost hotter. Oh, way hotter. Yeah, it's it's like it's like hotter that it's like it's not quite it's not quite there. You right. know, like it's just you're you're feeling each other out. Oh, she was like a two steps forward, one step back sort of sort of situation. It was, it was tasty. So we're going to wrap up here really soon. I just want to ask you one more question. What do you think is going to happen in book three? Oh, man. man. So I will give Sarah the um, 
the she just doesn't really care about her story. I don't know how to say this properly. <laughs> like she just she will just be like going right and then just decide all of a sudden, eh, as long as like the relationships, that part is still going, which is the core, which is the vehicle of the story. But like the rest, like whatever, all of a sudden city found attacked like awesome things can happen and she can shake that snow globe which i'm really stoked on actually i really like a writer who's not like so protector protective of their own little world that they built that they're too afraid to just like destroy it let's see what do i think is going to happen reese and Feyre are going to be separated somehow for like most of this next book i think Interesting. i don't know yeah. how but something's going to happen where they're going to be separated and they're going to it's going to be like a find them their way back to each other oh it already is of course she's the book ends with her in tamlin's court duh. totally yeah. <laughs> so and now that now the deal where she's with him one week out of the month isn't a thing anymore too right so, right yeah. so the real question is how long can she hang under Tam under Tamlin's rule before she like blows her cover and is just like I can't do this anymore and then leaves. I think there's gonna be some really awesome honestly the thing I'm most excited for is to see the interaction between Lucian and Feyre. Yeah, definitely. Because it's gonna be really honest, whereas everything between her and Tamlin are gonna it's not, you know. What do you think is gonna happen um with Feyre's sisters, Nesta and Elaine? Oh man. So did they go back with Tamlin at the end of the book? I don't remember. I don't either. I, yeah. It was a lot of things, people dispersing. Things it was a diaspora at the end of that book. Um I think we're gonna get kind of a similar sort of resistance but falls in love love story, except it'll be the real version of what happened to Feyre and Tamlin in the first book between Elaine and Lucian. Interesting. That's yeah, they're gonna. Is, she's gonna be very like resistant. She's like wearing an iron ring. She's engaged to someone else who's not Faye friendly. So yeah, that's gonna have to be dealt with. I hope he comes to like save her, like gallivants in and his white horse, and it gets rocked by, <laughs> by a bunch of <laughs> Faye. Man, there's really cool scenes that are coming our way. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, really I have I have very it. mixed feelings about book three. Okay, uh, I think it's like I think it's kind of a bloated mess. Um, okay. A lot of people really like Aqua War a lot. Um, I am not. I don't fall into that camp personally. <laughs> uh, I think some cool things happen in the next book, um, but I, I don't want to spoil it for you. Obviously, you okay. might end up liking it quite a bit. But actually, I, there are parts that I'm thinking of right now that I think you would like a lot. A lot, yeah. So it'll be interesting to see your reaction for that. But what, 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 last question: What do you think is going to happen with uh, the King of Highburn? What do you think? Do you think that's going to come to any kind of like fruition well, or like? Do you I mean, think... like Jorian, he I mean, he's obviously like he made a deal with Tamlin that he can his troops can come in via the uh, spring court right. lands. And then maybe like they'll work to I don't really know what his ends. are. I think his ends are to tear down the wall and take over the entire continent, which seems kind of at odds to what Tamlin expressed in the first book. So like. Yeah, it's weird. The other High Lords don't really seem to care that much about anything that's going on. Yeah. It's, and I don't really know what's up with that. I mean, I think that maybe it's like a tool to have Resand really stand out as like the High Lord that really cares the most. But I don't know. I think that Resand is like really it like he's he he's flirting with like that trope of like he cares too much right. kind of he thing. Cares and too I, much. that's a trope that I, I also don't really like very much yeah. in fantasy is like like they're just he's too good of a person right you know um and it's just like the altruistic eh. fool yeah it's just like eh. um but like yeah I did, I did notice that reading that um a lot of the other high lords are just kind of like well why would we do that and it's like dude right. like, they're gonna destroy like the entire what are you talking about like this is... i mean i always write that stuff off to like i guess my lord of the rings view of elves and fey is that they're kind of like standing apart like that's a thing that men have to deal with like right, whatever yeah. you know like they do their thing they hang out in their trees and their pretty towns and they're just like we don't really bug the world until the world bugs us oh one thing i'm really looking forward to is the next i'm, I'm gonna butcher the name of the celebration but kalimdor the celebration where yeah. tamlin has to go out and pick a pick a mate that's gonna be something in this next book for sure oh yeah, yeah. he's definitely gonna pick her and she's going to be like, no, and then something's going to, oh, man, that's going to be really cool. Well, I am super excited to go over A Court of Wings of Ruin with you when the time comes. And this has been really fun, too. I love talking this about these books. Fun. I'm so glad you're reading them right now. And uh, and we're, we're into the meat of this series now, and it's so exciting. Dude, we are into the meat. We're in the full 
course dinner part of this and man it's it's tasting pretty delicious i have oh yeah to admit. it's a good time if it's nothing different. else if yeah, nothing like, else yeah it's a good time yeah like we can pick apart the story or whatever the plot oh, it's but been man, done yeah yeah for sure and like you know maybe some is deserving but i'm just having so much fun while i'm reading it that it doesn't matter i i enjoy it every page lots and lots of valid criticism some that we didn't even go over here today but they do exist <laughs> but uh you know still having a good time here uh but everybody thank you Always. so much for listening to this episode we really appreciate you being here and of course tune in for our next episode about a court of thorns and roses which is going to cover a court of wings and ruin which is book three chad so glad you're reading these books thank you as always for sitting with me and discussing our favorite thing which is fantasy Ah, oh, thank you as always for being my partner in crime and cast and thank you uh wonderful book benders for tuning in Everybody, hope you have an awesome rest of your day. And of course, happy reading. Bye, everybody.